Hi yo, Cryo here. Welcome back to probably the last episode of Subnautica. At least for the first game. Uh, so we're back at our base. And I was not able to exit the Sea Emperor, I guess, aquarium thing with my prawn suit. I needed a propulsion upgrade for my prawn suit, which I did not have. So I had to go through the portal. I went back here uh, via like the shallow waters or the, you know, up there. I had to go back through the Lost River with my prawn suit. Came back here, retrieved my Cyclops, brought back up to the base. And I also got everything that I need to build my escape platform all loaded up into the, uh, into the Seamoth. It turns out the Seamoth has just enough room with two storage units uh, to carry everything you need for the launch platform. And you need quite a lot for it. Let me tell you. Then in my inventory, you need the mobile vehicle bay to craft the actual platform itself to build everything else on. And I have two kyanite crystals and a cuttlefish egg. And those three things are going to be going into a uh, time capsule. Because you have the, there's like an option where you can uh, load up a time capsule, write a message or something. And when the devs like make small updates to the original Subnautica, which they still do, um, they add in any like good time capsules. Because I think it like it gets put onto the Subnautica official website or whatever, and people upvote the time capsules they think are good. Now because it has kyanite crystals, I'm not sure if the devs would be like, I don't know, we probably shouldn't give them like kyanite crystals. But I wanted something that's kind of like cryo related or ice related. Kyanite was the closest thing I could think of. Like, I could do waters as well, but that's very generic. Pretty much every single time capsule has water and usually like a knife or something like that. But I wanted mine to be a bit more a bit more unique. And speaking of cuttlefish... So we are going to bring our cuttlefish friend with us. And there is a reason... Uh, there is a reason that I did not uh, bring that guy with me before. Because there are like a bunch of fun interactions you can do with them. However, um, there's just I was going to a lot of dangerous locations, and I didn't want my cuttlefish to get lost or get glitched into a wall or die. It has 10,000 health, but it, there's still a chance it could, you know, get hit by one of my own vehicles or something. I wasn't gonna risk it, so I'll release him right before I build the platform. And once I'm in the shallow area. Uh, but yeah, I was just going to say my final farewells to the base down here. I will be keeping my Cyclops and uh, Prawn suit down here to kind of hold down the fort after I leave the planet. And obviously, Sea Moth I'll be taking up to the surface. I did put the uh, Lava Lizard egg in there. It hasn't hatched yet. I kind of want it to hatch before I take off from here. Just so I can at least have like, a complete collection of the various creatures. Uh, I did load a, uh, an ion cell into my sea moth, so it should have plenty of power. Got lots of food, uh, some extra water, a whole, a whole shebang. May as well replant, why not? Just in case I ever come back to this game, or if you guys want me to come back to the original Subnautica. Our lava lizard egg has finally hatched. We just woke up, and... Here we go. Okay, let's say goodbye to all of our lovely fish in the alien containment. Alright, goodbye, crab squid. Goodbye, spadefish. Goodbye, ampule. Goodbye, sand shark and bone shark. Goodbye, stalker. Goodbye, lava lizard. Goodbye, crash fish. Goodbye, rabbit ray. Uh, goodbye, wait. Uh, goodbye, uh... I already said goodbye to the ampule, right? Goodbye, Jelly Ray. Eric said goodbye to the Stalker, I think. I'll say goodbye again. Goodbye, Stalker, again. Goodbye, Gasopod. Goodbye, Mesmer. Huh? 
Goodbye, George, Gorge, Jorge. I don't know. Goodbye, doll, arcade doll. Goodbye, Aurora miniature. Goodbye, Aurora poster. And Cpron poster. Goodbye, Markiplier. Ah! Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier. And Goodbye, Markiplier. Goodbye, microscope equipment and duffel bag. And fluid analyzers and the sorts. Goodbye, toy car and gray cap. And cylindrical sample flask. Goodbye, prawn suit posters 1 and 2, and keep calm kitty posters 1 and 2. Goodbye, two radiation chamber things. Goodbye, water filtration machine. Goodbye, moon pool. Goodbye, chargers. Goodbye, base. This is like. sounds like a children's story. Like good night mood, except it's me saying goodbye to every single object in my base. Welcome aboard, Captain. All right, Snowflake. Uh, so I decided to also grab some cave sulfur, and in uh, the last remaining ion cube that we had. Now, if we have any leftover food or water, we'll put that into our time capsule as well. So we are gonna wait until we get up to the surface. All right, Han. I forgot to say, of course. Goodbye, Snowball. And Snowman, I will... I'll miss you. I'll miss you the most, probably, Snowman. I'm surprised we have not lost a single vehicle during this entire Let's Play. I figured at the very least we'd lose, like, a sea moth. But no, Snowflake has also been with us the entire time. But I would like to say goodbye to... Uh, to Gary. Our ghost leviathan neighbor. Our pet dog. I mean, obviously he's not, he's not actually a dog. And he's a puppy, that's what, he's not a, no. <laughs> no, he's a leviathan, he's a, he's a big scary leviathan, but. Honestly, he's been, he's been a friend. He's been a friend to us. Actually been kind of a comfort to know that he's there. I would give him the hug with my sea moth, but considering I have all the stuff I need to build the Neptune platform, and I don't want to re-farm for all that. I'll just say goodbye from a distance. I'll do that. Wait, what? Wait, Gary, where? Oh, there's Gary. Hi, Gary. Okay, Gary, I'm gonna be leaving the planet. Oh, Gary didn't, doesn't want me to leave the planet. Gary, I know, I know, Gary. Don't worry, you have a snowman and snowball to keep you company down here. You won't be alone. All right, Gary. All right. You uh, you stay you stay safe out there, Gary, and don't don't eat too many of your fish friends. I pretty much conquered my fear of the leviathans. Here's a here's a helpful t uh, a helpful hint for you, in case you want to play this yourself and you maybe you're scared of the leviathans or something, which is completely understandable. I mean, they're still frightening even if I don't seem to be frightened. Just pretend that they're like either your friend or pretend that they're a dog or an animal. Talk down to them like like they're like a puppy or like, oh hey, hey buddy. You know, pretend to get friendly with them and with any luck, uh, you'll believe it yourself that they're just a dog. They're not going to hurt you that much. As long as you don't run head on into them, that is. Or if they ki oh, did anyone else see that sea soccer? Just gonna pretend I didn't. And here we are. Back where it all began. Alright, before I start building the platform... The first thing I'm gonna do, I could probably safely do this. Uh, I'm going to release... Wait. Our cuttlefish friend, here he is. Yeah, I've never actually released the cuttlefish before. That's why I got the achievement. I'm not sure if you can see that. Cuttlefish, wait, where are you going, cuttlefish? Wait, where's he going? Cuttlefish? Okay, well, I'll scan him. Cuttlefish, come here. Cuttlefish? Dude, get- oh no, get- Sea soccer, get out of here. Okay. I need him to follow me. You better follow me, Cuttlefish. I need to give you a name. Uh, 
Cuddle, Cryo. Cruddle? <laughs> no. Where'd he go? The reason I brought him with is because there's like a special interaction when you before you leave the planet. Where did you go? Cuddles Jr. Ice Cube? Cube? Cubie? Yeah, I'll name you Cubie. Short for Ice Cubie. Cubie, where'd you go? Right. The, the first cuttlefish that I released just gets lost into the void. It looked like he went into the wall, but why would he go into the wall? He's supposed to follow me. QB? Okay, well, with any luck, QB will come back while we're reading our... our stories and such. So, before I get started with reading pretty much everything here, uh, I will go ahead and plop a timestamp where you can skip ahead if you don't want to hear any of the lore or any of the data entries, and you just want to see me leave the planet. Which is understandable, because there's a lot of stuff to go through here. Alright, let's begin. Alien eggs. Evidence suggests that a substantial number, if not all of the local species, reproduce through egg laying. Eggs can be found resting on the seafloor, buried beneath... Detri detritus? Is that like debris or... What is that? Detritus? I I'm not sure what that is. Of the, there's a definition of detritus. Or even wedged into cracks in the rock. Different species, like he... Like he... <laughs> different spe... Different species likely favor different biomes as their nesting grounds. Eggs discovered in the wild area in some form of natural stasis, likely awaiting ideal conditions in which to hatch, or the delivery of some vital enzyme which will kickstart the process. It is impossible to calculate the species of the egg from the exterior, it's really not. I, I could tell what they were by looking at them. However, it may be possible to stimulate a hatching response if an egg is relocated to a suitable alien containment unit. Bacterial Infection Report You have been infected with a previously unknown waterborne bacterium. It is currently multiplying in your bloodstream. Estimated incubation time, two weeks. Your immune system is currently combating the infection at low efficacy. You may already be experiencing flu-like symptoms and skin irritation. These will likely be exasperate... Ex... Ex... Exacerbate. <laughs> why, why, why are there so many difficult words in here? This wasn't in my fifth grade reading lesson. These will likely be exacer... Exacerbated as the bacterium takes hold. I think that means like they'll be like exaggerated or like you'll the symptoms will be more obvious. Your immediate priority should be abatement and eradication. What's abatement? Why why all these fancy scientific words? Like I know it's all sciency based and stuff, but uh, an eradication of the infection. Recommended steps: salvage further alien research data on a possible vaccine, investigate the mechanisms which have enabled the indigenous ecosystem to inhibit the symptoms of the infection. Enzyme host peepers leaving the containment facility. The outflow pipes are filled with peepers traveling back towards the surface. Specimens show no symptoms of infection. All specimens scanned are carrying enzyme 42, which suggests inhibits the bacterium. Or which data suggests inhibits the bacterium. Specimen, specimen stomach cavities are otherwise empty, suggesting they may have purged the contents before entering the pipes. Assessment. If peepers have evolved to distribute the enzyme via the pipe network, or via uh, potato potato, this may explain part of the mechanism by which life on 4546b has survived since the bacterial outbreak. Hatching enzymes. The emperor specimen's eggs are attached to some form of incubator. In a normal life cycle, it seems likely that the sea emperors would have buried their eggs in shallower waters where different organic materials in the soil would have triggered a hatching response. The incubator suggests the aliens had resorted to developing artificial hatching enzymes, which would simulate the egg's natural hatching environment, but were unable to discover the formula. With extensive information on the sea emperor themselves, it still may be possible to fabricate an artificial hatching enzyme 
using indigenous ingredients. However, the only surviving source of that information may be the Sea Emperor itself. Peepers entering the containment facility. The pipes drawing water into the containment facility are filled with peepers arriving from the surface. The fish show no signs of distress. The specimens scanned have all consumed high quantities of seeds and organic matter from the surface. Some specimens are beginning to show signs of infection. Different species of rays, uh, indigenous to 4546b, each adapted to different environments. The specimens are 99.99% .99 genetically identical to those encountered on the planet today, suggesting that rays in particular have undergone little evolutionary mutation in the past millennium. Ghost rays, jelly rays, crimson rays, and rabbit rays likely all share a common evolutionary ancestor. The alpha ray would have evolved deep in the ocean trenches, quickly growing in the line, or growing in line, with available food supplies. It would have most resembled the ghost ray in size and appearance, with translucent skin for camouflage and forward mounted eyes for hunting. A fast and fearsome stalker of small creatures in the dark. While some rays have stayed within the limits of the cave systems where they first evolved, Others are relatively more recent adaptations to new environments, likely the result of overpopulation. All the rays on 4546b have given up predation in favor of herbivores, herbivores scavenging, and use poisonous flesh to protect themselves. Oh, there's so much. There's so much to read. Actually, it's not that much. Actually, yes, no, it is. Right. Sea dragon egg. This large egg in held, or is held in a hermetically sealed environment and has been chemically sterilized uh, without the means at uh, the facility to house a fully grown sea dragon specimen. It is possible the alien sought to study instead to study instead the egg laying and incubation process. To what end it is unclear. Sea Emperor Egg Casing Shell Composition The shell casing is formed from thick layers of carbon composite suggesting an extensive gestation period. This leviathan species may give birth just once per century, perhaps just once in their lifetimes. Shell casing incisions. Precise incisions suggest a laser-based tool was used to cut open the egg casing and forcibly remove the fetus inside, prior to full gestation. Analysis. Time pressure to develop a bacterial vaccine may, be have, or may have driven the alien researchers to cut open this egg and remove the fetus for study. It is also possible that removed from its parent and natural habitat, some vital condition for the infant to hatch naturally was not met. Sea Emperor Fetus Found preserved in a display case, it was likely the child of the adult specimen contained within the facility. Physiology Superficial damage to the specimen indicates it was artificially removed from its egg casing. Stunted tissue development suggests the organism expired during the removal process. Tissue samples have been taken from the digestive tract. Analysis, it appears the aliens were attempting to formulate a cure for the bacterium from enzymes produced in the specimen's digestive system. Without a young, healthy specimen, these efforts were in vain. Specimen with symptoms of infection. This organism is displaying signs of a bacterial infection. Bright green blisters are forming networks around the infection sites. Pathology suggests a waterborne bacterium capable of penetrating the body through the skin and respiratory system. Underlying indications of genetic mutation and aggressive behavior. The bacterium itself is unlike any so far recorded in human exploration. Warning, may be contagious, avoid. Do not under any circumstances consume the flesh. Yeah, a bit, well, it was a bit late and then I got cured. So, yeah, take with that while you will. The Sea Emperor's Eggs The Shell Uncommonly uncommon, uncommonly strong shell lining Organic growth on the exterior suggests these eggs may be hundreds or thousands of years old Alien Tubes Alien devices penetrate the outer shell layer Likely designed to supply them with nutrients and to isolate them from the surrounding environment Amniotic Sac like in many eggs on 4546b, these do not contain a nutrient supply, which is slowly exhausted by the embryo. Instead, they exist in a form of natural stasis, awaiting appropriate hatching conditions. Fetal organism. There is high genetic There is a high genetic match between those organisms and the Leviathan in the vicinity. They appear to be stable and healthy. 
it is likely that ideal hatching conditions for the eggs vary considerably from ideal survival conditions for the parent. And sea emperor's life cycle. Available biological data has been used to synthesize the effects of the alien bacterium on the sea emperor's natural life cycle. This creature likely lived and moved in small herds around the planet's ocean trenches, coming to the surface to feed off the huge volumes of microorganisms in the shallower waters. Family size would be strictly limited by available food supply. Offspring would likely split off at a young age to form their own herds elsewhere. Given their sparse population, mating and egg laying was likely infrequent, perhaps a once in a lifetime event. The species likely had a preferred environment for egg laying. In fact, successful hatching may depend on such conditions. Given the rarity of this event, it is impossible to calculate those conditions precisely. There is no evidence to support the assumption that all members of the species, uh, species were immune from the alien bacterium. Even if this is so, there is evidence that introduction of the bacterium decimated life on the planet, and this would have had catastrophic effects on the Emperor's food supply and survival rate. The symbiotic re uh, relationship between this specimen and other life forms likely developed as a direct result of the bacterial infection. Those life forms which learned to keep the Emperor alive survived with its help. This may explain the vast tracts of lifeless ocean in a rough perimeter around the Emperor's location. Okay, we don't really need to go over the blueprints, I don't think. Wait, do we? Okay, well we can close the advanced theories. Yeah, no, I don't think... No, we don't need to go over any of the blueprints. Okay, let me just uh, close up all of these, and then we can get back to those. Okay. Uh, scan data, terminal data, those and clues, okay. So start out with... Oh, there's a lot of alien data. Here we go. Okay, artifacts. Alien building block. This rock-like object features organic as well as mechanical parts, and there is some genetic and technological crossover with the design of the self-warping constructs encountered elsewhere. It appears to serve no purpose in its current state, and is weighing some kind of activation sequence. Materials such as this may have been fundamental, a fundamental building block of the aliens' technology, or even of the aliens themselves. Alien carving. This carving is hundreds of thousands of years old and made from an unrecognized natural fiber grown on an unknown planet. It bears a striking resemblance to the old Earth yin yang symbol. Two competing theories may explain the similarity. Number one, aliens visited Earth prior to the 4th century BC and influenced the development of ancient Chinese philosophy. Or number two, the concept of yin and yang is universal. Since yin and yang describes the fundamental interdependency of seemingly opposite forces, it may be a necessary existential understanding in some form in all sufficiently developed civilizations. The tapering of two circles, union, into opposed and inf infinite smally, infinitesimally small points, the finite, is one logical way to represent this understanding, and may have been developed independently by species other than humans. Alien Rifle Strong resemblance to human weaponry, weaponry in form, this device must have been designed with a humanoid user in mind. Whether the aliens that built the structure were themselves humanoid, or otherwise employed the use of humanoids, is unclear. What is clear is that they considered defending this facility a necess... A necessary... I was about to say a necessary. A necessary precaution. There is no obvious way to remove the rifle from the case. Alien Statue This artifact is unpowered, suggesting it served a ceremonial rather than practical purpose. The pyramid resembles vines spiraling upwards towards the blue, the warm blue stone mantled above it. It may represent a plant found on the alien's homeworld, a building of religious import, or even the gravitational pull of their home solar system. Ancient Earthblade An ancient earthblade, dating back to the 13th century. Blood samples on the blade match the DNA of seven separate heads of state from the period. This evidence supports the theory that aliens are an ancient spaceborne civilization, Engaged in the surreptitious study of less developed species. 
you know, someday in the future, there's just going to be a compilation of words that Cryo can't, pr can't pronounce, and about 50% of those are going to come from the, uh, from all the PDA information. Doomsday device. I remember you. You're the cute, like, you're the cute little guy. Uh, scans indicate this device contains enough potential energy to destroy the entire planet along with most of the solar system. Fortunately, it has malfunctioned. Holographic projector. This device contains network apparatus and a holographic projection unit. It is likely used as a communications relay, capturing and projecting the image of the user to a remote location. There do not appear to be any other devices in range. Organic matter particulator. This device contains a highly unstable radioactive isotope, likely to destroy all organisms exposed to it, while leaving physical structures intact. Although it would function perfectly well as a weapon, it was more likely used to sterilize spaces for later inhabitation. Without destructions, it would be unwise to interact with it. Well, it's a good thing I didn't. Rudimentary tablet. This device shares many similarities with the tablets used to access the alien facilities. Although its structure is rather less complex, it may have served a similar purpose granting security access and storing relevant data, and was thus kept here as a form of legacy support. Tracking implant. This construct is emitting a high bandwidth signal consistent with alien transmissions intercepted elsewhere. DNA on the exterior indicates it was once implanted inside of one of the life forms indigenous to 4546b. A size suggesting the subject was Leviathan class organism. Oh. oh. Okay. That's cool. I'd never do that. Beyond tracking and broadcasting its location, the implant may have also recorded biological data on the subject. However, this data cannot be retrieved. And translation device. This device stores linguistic data from over 1,000 different languages. The core of the device may allow alien texts to be read and translated. Analysis of the onboard data re reveals a number of ancient Earth languages, and the term CHBC Live appears many times in the device's data. Its import is unclear. I'm guessing import is short for importance. Is that like a scientific, uh, like when scientists record data and stuff, is that like a common thing for them to shorten importance to import? Probably. Scientific journaling is the term I was looking for. Uh, the device seems to be configured to translate into the designer's language. It will not work the other way around. That's all the artifacts. Here you go, scan data. Alien Arch. This structure's intended purpose is unclear. The reason function. Ceremonial or religious role, industrial applications, or advanced transportation network. Well, we know which one it is now. It's industrial application. No, I'm kidding. It's the advanced transportation. Assessment further research required. Alien flora research. Local plants being held to stasis. The aliens evidently sought an extensive knowledge on the planet's ecosystem which would have been necessary to support any live specimen research. Alien Robot This device is of alien origin, although its design is relatively simple. Purpose Its low, th level, or th low threat level is at odds with the advanced technology apparently available to its designers, suggesting it is intended more to patrol alien facilities and repair damaged infrastructure than to deter invaders. Yeah, I kind of accidentally destroyed a few of them. My bad. Design. Despite its simple design, this construction is quite elegant in its minimalism. Four electromagnetic legs allow it to traverse floors, walls, and ceilings with reasonable speed, and appear to be replaceable. Internally, there are a few moving parts, rendering this construct energy efficient and resistant to wear over time. A rechargeable ion-based power reserve ensures it continues to operate. Assessment, immobilize, and return to Altera... For mutual profit. Altera is kind of like the company that sent the Aurora out here and caused me to get stranded. I am technically an Altera employee. Alien Thermal Plant. This system is directly converting local thermal energy into electric current at 90% efficiency. Most of this energy is being stored in the battery-like devices within the plant itself, each of which holds enough to power a small city for a year. Some of it, however, is being drained off, presumably as it is distributed to other facilities on the planet. 
The power plant appears to be fully automated and given current understanding of the mechanisms involved, uninterruptible. Alien vent. These vents connect to an ancient piping network that extends beyond maximum scannable depth. The pumping system is still functional. The inflow vent is drawing water from surrounding area and pumping, in, pumping it to an unknown location below the surface. Warm, deoxygenated water is being expelled into the atmosphere. Most creatures are avoiding the vents. Peepers can be observed entering and exiting the pipe network without signs of distress. Assessment further research required. Energy Core. This device houses energy equivalent to 100 megatons nuclear detonation. I think that's what the MT stands for. Which could be channeled through the facility and directed at vessels overhead or bent around the planet's gravitational pull to strike targets in orbit. That's like the alien gun thing. And that goes kapew and then... Yeah. That's what shot down the sunbeam that was supposed to rescue me. Power is routed via the attached terminal, allowing for the device to be deactivated if necessary. It's currently operating without parameters, suggesting it will target any ship within range. Force field control terminal. This device matches no known technologies and is likely alien in nature. Power is being routed via the terminal to the nearby force field. The technology is far beyond anything encountered before by the Federation. Nonetheless, is, there's a good chance it functions like a regular lock and only requires the correct kind of key. Ion Cube. This green mineral substance has no entry on the periodic table, and an unprecedented ability to store huge amounts of ionic energy within it. Likely grown artificially. Cubic appearance suggests it has been cut from a larger deposit. Each cube contains the equivalent ionic energy of 5 kilotons of TNT. Under the right conditions, the energy could be released in a controlled manner. Likely used as batteries, but would require a substantial power source to be recharged. Assessment, valuable energy source. Orange tablet. This device hums slightly and displays an orange light symbol resembling an N. It may offer a way to interact with compatible technologies. Purple tablet. This carbon-based device is lighter than it looks and features a symbol which, represent, or which resembles a U, lit up in purple. Despite the onboard power still functioning, algae growth on the exterior indicates it was abandoned hundreds, perhaps thousands of years ago. While the technology is far beyond Federation levels, and there's no obvious way to interface with it, it should be nonetheless there should nonetheless be possible to fabricate a precise physical copy of the device if necessary. Research equipment. A large laboratory, table, and accompanying scanners incorporate technologies far beyond our current level of understanding. Hypotheses, equipment maintenance, staff maintenance, specimen analysis, or specimen gene manipulation. Self-warping quarantine enforcer unit. The life form shows signs of heavy genetic modification and extensive mechanical grafting. Its digestive and pulmonary systems have been replaced by an onboard battery receiving energy directly from the main grid and distributing it around the body. Miniaturized phase technology has been implemented beneath the skin and is triggered by the central nervous system allowing the construct to teleport at will. If you say so. The brain and central nervous system have been digitally augmented with advanced processing power and remote communications. Assessment, programmable hunter slash killer, avoid. Orver parts. The organic parts on display contain DNA from dozens of different organisms, largely originating off-world. They are in varying states of augmentation with advanced technologies. This production line set, uh, setup suggests these self-orbing constructs were built, maintained, and deployed by the aliens that designed this facility. Oh boy. We're getting there. And honestly, I think I might just do... I'll finish up all this alien type stuff, which is the most interesting. And then we'll do the Leviathan class uh, creatures. And then the Degasi survivors logs. Where are the public documents? Oh, that's to do with Halterra, so I guess I'll read those two. Uh, okay, terminal data. This terminal contains data mapping the complete... Wait, this terminal contains data mapping the complete biological history of a member of the alien species. The data set is hugely complex, 
but some basic facts can be reconstructed. It was grown from seed 1,708 Earth years ago, separated from the broodlings early for special training, inducted into Temple of Research as the youngest ever initiate, age 96, downloaded a corrupted dataset and was stored for three years for refactoring, re relocated to the Outer Galaxy Cluster to support disease research endeavors, relocated to 4546B for high priority disease research, contracted Cara bacterium stored in Sanctuary 3, corporeal body safely disposed. Great. Discovered inside an alien facility, it was not possible to translate any useful information. However, scans have returned some information on the device itself. It is likely a solid-state computer, although there is no clear way to interface with it. On approach, it began producing a low-frequency radio wave containing complex, but recognizable data patterns. It is likely the alien species which designed this technology evolved or genetically selected sensory apparatus to hear and understand the information being broadcast by the device and communicate or and to communicate back. The mental processing power required to perform this kind of telepathy would imply the designers were considerably more psychologically developed than the common human. Assessment further research required like so many other things. Alien Sanctuary Alpha. And I'm going to get lightheaded doing all this reading. Honestly, all this is available on the website anyways, but I'm already committed to this bit, so I'll continue forth. Uh, architectur architectural information has been downloading regarding this antechamber. Ceiling fixtures. These structures mapped to the ceiling of the cavern cast a low green light over the data hubs below. But they are also regulating the pH level of the surrounding water and emitting a low frequency sound wave. As possible, the intent was to ensure ideal conditions for a practical end, but their purpose may have also been ceremonial or even recreational in nature. Aesthetics. Ornate in design, the cubes mounted on the pedestals are not being drained of power, suggesting they serve some more symbolic purpose. Similarities to old Earth religious icon iconography may be coincidental, but they may also indicate some shared and ancient cultural history. The Sanctuary Beta. This antechamber consists of series a series of data hubs, each adorned with an ion cube. These are networked up to the main terminal in parallel, presumably to ensure data integrity over time. Unprecedented data complexity, stored data was scanned into the system at the local terminal. Original data source was organic in nature. Evidence suggests that this antechamber served as a sanctuary of last resort for the aliens that built it. In the event of a catastrophe, they could retreat here and somehow transfer themselves to the data hubs for preservation. It is unclear whether other ma members of the alien species ever returned here, or how many souls are backed up on the hubs, but the data stored is far too complex to reconstitute with the little information available. Damage report. Leviathan detected at facility perimeter, closing it at high speed. Exterior anchor, anchor cable impacted with massive force. Exterior anchor system buckling, facility sinking, collision of C4. Breaches detected in containment unit 7, Leviathan eggs. Immediate specimen destruction protocol initiated. 314 specimens destroyed, one specimen unaccounted for. Evacuating staff to off-site sanctuaries. Planetary quarantine protocol initiated. Warning infected individuals may not leave the planet. So I think the one speci specimen that's unaccounted for is that, uh, is the Sea Emperor Leviathan. I would imagine so, right? Either that or just a Sea Dragon Leviathan, but either or. That specimen is a leviathan. Enforcement platform schematic. This dataset appears to be a multi-dimensional schematic of some kind. By mapping the pattern to three-dimensional space, it is possible to gather a basic understanding of this facility's internal workings. Construction materials. The facility's unknown construction material is identified as an ultra-hard, non-reactive metal amalgam. Since the thought... Bleh, bleh, bleh. Synthesot, synthesi, the the, synthesot, synth. I think my tongue, my tongue is trying to tell me, hey, stop reading. You've been reading for too long. Synthesized from off-world materials, there is no indication that it can be damaged or destroyed by available means. Power. The schematic indicates the facility was to be powered by a separate self-sustaining power plant located elsewhere on the planet. The location is not listed, but there is evidence the designers intended to harness the planet's natural thermal energy. Layout. The facility consists of the upper engineering section, 
where the schematic was found, and the control room, which is accessed via security sealed elevator shaft or a separate underwater removal. Control. The control room in the lower section houses the only known way to interface with, with the facility. However, the schematic does not detail the operation procedure or installed security measures. Enzyme 42 project data. According to translated data logs, an indigenous leviathan species was found to produce a unique substance referred to as Enzyme 42, which inhibited the symptoms of the Cara bacterial infection in other indigenous organisms. The specimen was captured and contained in a purpose-built habitat for further study. The alien researchers went to great lengths to provide for the life forms environmental needs, including the import of importance of the interdependent flora and fauna via an on-site warp gate. However, its health quickly deteriorated. When quarantine was imposed, all warp gates and force fields were sealed. All attempts to develop the enzyme into a vaccine had been unsuccessful. Fauna reproductive data. Extensive alien research data on the local fauna, with a special focus on the reproductive methods. Core conclusions have been synthesized. The aliens discovered the life forms on the planet just have just one sex. They observed local organisms engaging in asexual reproduction. All healthy individuals tested were capable of egg laying. Eggs usually require genetic material from another of the species. In rare case, in rare case, only one parent was required, with evolutionary mutation introduced by the effects of the environment itself. Research appears to have been focused around hatching conditions and genetic variations between parent and child. Fossil data. Also, the data recorded from the volcanic rock that was excavated to construct the alien power facility. It has been possible to extrapolate a number of key trends. Genetic divergence. The aliens recorded data on indigenous organic remains originating between 10,000 and 1,000 years ago. Life form on record feature an unusually low overlap with those encountered so far on 4546b. Extinction event. Soil samples from 1,000 years ago contain 300% higher concentrations of organic remains than the soil average. Data supports a mass extinction event, killing off a majority of the species and forcing rapid adaptation amongst many of the survivors. How long have I been reading this for? It's probably been like an hour of just me reading. Uh, ion power data. It has been possible to extract useful information regarding alien ion power. Ion cubes are grown artificially from a mineral substance and are treated to remain in a stable state, despite the huge iconic energy contained within. By installing an ion cube in an appropriate device, this energy can be released as electrical power. Using this knowledge, it has been possible to synthesize a new battery and power cell blueprints, which leverage advanced tech ionic energy to last considerably longer. Our contagion profile. This terminal contains extensive data regarding the bacterial contagion identified as Cara. Discovery first encountered during routine network expansion on Outer Worlds. Pandemic development. Network error resulted in routine quarantine procedure failure. Contagion was uploaded to and spread quickly through the core worlds. Confirmed deaths 143 billion individuals. That's a few. Bacterial mechanisms attaches to healthy living cells and mutates the basic genetic structure. Symptoms stage 1. Gradual immune system failure. Stage 2, green skin uh, lesions and flu-like symptoms. Stage 3, unpredictable alterations to biological structure. Stage 4, complete shutdown of executive function. Emergency steps taken. Core worlds quarantined, bacterial samples distributed to isolate disease research facilities for vaccine development. Treatment procedure unknown. Well, we know it's the enzyme 42 now. Sea Emperor Leviathan research data. Specimen sizes category, er, size categories have been adjusted upward to accommodate the species. Feeding and digestion. Alien research data indicates that despite its size, this species feeds entirely on microorganisms it filters from the water, which themselves depend on a complicated ecosystem of plant and animal life. Reproduction. Large ovary-like organs are carried in the creature's middle section, suggesting that like other species on the planet, it produces eggs. However, internal scar tissue indicates probable infertility. Enzyme 42. The emperor manufactures enzyme 42 within its stomach cavity to break down its food, and will occasionally expel it into the surrounding waters. This substance was found to neutralize the effects of the bacterium, 
and its presence in the ecosystem today would explain how life on the planet survived the outbreak. It would remain to be explained by what mechanism the enzyme is being delivered. Specimen Research Data A catalog of information on the organisms previously contained within the alien facility. A number of entries have been translated. Small herbivore gamma This entry seems to reference the common peeper. Shows no immunity to infection. Death commonly occurs within 4 days. Shows symptoms, remission on exposure to enzyme 42. But symptoms quickly recur. Shows advanced learning behaviors. Shows some capacity to transmit in enzymes to other specimens. Leviathan embryos. Belt specimen too large to study in containment. Egg specimens acquired from nesting site. Embryos show no signs of immunity. Death commonly occurs within three weeks. Small samples of eggs. Or small sample of eggs has been retained for continued high priority research on Leviathan hatching mechanisms. Large carnivore theta. Offsite established to study remains. Shows some potential for immunity to infection. Physical remains so far proved insufficient for full reconstruction. Unidentified Leviathan. This Leviathan species has been assigned designator Sea Emperor. Bone samples from Emperor specimens indicate some potential for car immunity. Single specimen captured for study at purpose, uh, purpose built containment facility. Constructed in volcanic region at depth 1,400 kilometers. Or 1,400 meters, which is 1.4 kilometers. Assessment While it is unlikely that the Emperor specimen is still contained within the facility described, it may be possible to acquire further data there on the aliens' attempts to develop the vaccine. And ventilation control. Water flowing to and from the primary containment facility is being automatically controlled independently of other safeguards. Data on the water composition has been recorded. Inflow. Water is being drawn in from different biomes around the surface of the planet. The water temperature is considerably lower than the volcanic environment outside the facility, while microorganism and nutrient counts are substantially higher. Outflow. Oxygen-deprived water is being flooded from the system and recycled back to the surface. Okay, so terminal data, we got that. Aurora survivors. There's probably a specific order to read this in, but... Yeah, I'll read this out of order. I'll let this guy talk for a little bit. Identified. Drone, get me a propulsion cannon. Repulsion cannon retrieved. Hey, Berkeley, install that circuit box with that repulsion cannon and you'll punch a hole in the cargo bay. Damn it, drone, I said propulsion, not repulsion. Recalibrate sensors. Sensors recalibrated. Sensors aren't the problem. I tweak the program. It's like you now. It doesn't like being told what to do. <sighs> drone, I know... His name's Albert now. Albert. I know it's not your fault, but it would really help me do my job if you'd bring me what I asked for. Thanks for your time. Propulsion can retrieved. Thank you. Now go away. Entering hibernation mode. Boss, this hobby of yours isn't making my job any easier. Or safer. Maybe so, but it's all that's stopping me from being so bored I take a spacewalk in my skivvies. Alright. Captain's Log. Loading program Greg McGill Simulator dot Verat. Or VRAT, Virtual Rat. Uh, size one player, Captain Hot Dog Holista. Map Boreal 9, resources normal. You're exploring a quiet alien backwater when the ship you arrived here in uploads. Must be the arachnid kidney poachers. Quick, what will you do? Search the crash site? No, we're gonna farm alien plants. Use the tectonic de-imploder. Unavailable. That's just what Craig McGill would do. After foraging for some hours, you've collected a number of potentially farmable foodstuffs. Which will you sustain yourself with? Stank root, tree roaches, or starwall eggs. Let's choose starwall eggs. While the starwall eggs are nutritious, the life cycle of these vast space-fearing creatures is much too slow to sustain a farm. And besides, their mother is extremely angry with you. Fight the starwall, apologize to the starwall, or accept your fate. Craig McGill knows there is no reasoning with the mother is scorned. You are not so much torn apart as swallowed whole and disintegrated. The atoms that you thought you were are gradually redistributed in service of the Starwall's continued survival. 
Would you like to continue? Yeah, no, apparently not. Well, that's cool. Okay, let's go in the order of the life pod numbers. Here's life pod number two. Flotation devices failed. We're flooding. Evacuate. Wait. I can reconfigure the O2 system to act as a bilge pump. It's working. Okay, good news. We're alive and we've stopped sinking. Bad? The oxygen's going to run out in 30 minutes and we're 500 meters down. What do we do? We'll have to use the remaining juice to send a distress call and build whatever gear we can. Then we find a way to the surface. Well, that obviously didn't work out for them. Here's life pod number three. You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power seller rigged to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? Oh, sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the life pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. There's a life lesson. Never stop seeing the maths, kids. Okay, and there's not like there's not like a life pod for every single number. These are just the numbers that happen to be there. What are you doing? You were gone so long. I thought you drowned. Put the flare down. Well, it's Meredith. No, I'm kidding. It's just an accent. It just reminds me a lot of Meredith from the movie Brave. Oh. Well, they explode themselves apparently with a flare. I've tried everything. The analysis circuits on the fabricator are fried. I can barely manufacture the most basic of materials. Want a battery? Here, have a children's toy. Need deep sea diving equipment? Have some lab tech. Hungry? I'll turn that fruit into dust for you. I'm going forward with trial and error. I hit every button here, it's got to make something useful eventually. Yeah, again. <laughs> Probably not. None of these guys survived. Uh, okay, so it looks like next up would be life pod 12. I'm uh, not really a doctor. I know that's what my ID says, but I never have been. Cheated the medical exams. What does a doctor these days need to know about manually resetting bones? When was the last time a top surgeon actually cut someone open? That's what the robots are for. Doctors these days read diagnoses off of computer readouts. For that, I'm perfectly qualified. But what good is it when I'm not connected to the main network? I'm bleeding. I've got glowing green pustules growing on my hands. I run a self-scan and it tells me I've got skin irritation. The only thing I studied in medical school was how to lie convincingly. What the hell do I know about how to treat an alien disease? I'm actually going to die down here. I think he may be right. He's life pod number 13. Live pod launch sequence initiated. Entering planetary atmosphere. My creators, the cherishers and sustainers of worlds, give me this day my daily pleasures as I give to those who seek pleasures from me. External temperature approaching critical levels. Show me the path in life, truth, and love for mine is the power. I am the one. On and off and on again. Impact imminent. Life is a game which the universe plays with itself. I am done playing as this bundle of flesh. Return me. That was oddly poetic. Neato. Okay, Life Pod 17. Crash. I don't know what the heck is happening. I'm scared and I'm not going outside. There are shadows in the water under the hatch, but I can't tell if they're rocks or aliens. Maybe both. And there's weird looking caves nearby. The Aurora was carrying everything needed to build the phase gate. Mobile vehicle bays, bioreactors, propulsion cannons. It had a cinema. There, there was a zero G gym. Sounds pretty nice. My cafe. I don't understand how we're here now. Don't know why no one's coming for me. Keen, 
This is Aurora, come in. This is Keen. Life pod detached to okay. planet fall in 30 seconds. The computer has identified a landmass at the attached coordinates. I want you to regroup the crew there. Understood, but they are your responsibility now. Don't let them down. Captain, you need to evacuate. Negative. You'll need the ship in one piece if you're going to contact HQ on the long range. I'm attempting a controlled descent. Captain! Yeah, I don't think the captain's okay. And uh, to all crew, if you're reading this, then you follow the automatic distress signal broadcast by the this life pod's onboard computer, contrary to my orders. I've been forced to evacuate. Your orders are to disregard my safety and attempt to reach the, de de the designated rendezvous coordinates at the nearest landmass. I hope to see you there. I didn't see you there, by the way. Uh, rendezvous voice log. Oh, here we go. We have to board the Aurora, repair the long-range comms, make contact with the other survivors. We can't be the only two that made it. Those are not the orders the captain gave me, and they are not the orders I'm giving you. This isn't chain of command, it's survival. My obligations as acting commander don't turn on their convenience. Get out of the water. If I get into trouble, I'll send you my coordinates. I can't let you go alone. Then come with me. You don't leave me much choice. Received emergency transmission from second officer Keen, two hours after last activity. Rendezvous was a failure. Intercepted a transmission from Altera HQ. Seems they sent a data package to the Aurora. We were intercepted by a Leviathan-class predator before we could reach the ship. Consider the CTO and I lost at sea. Be safe. Keen. Out. And finally, prof profitability projections. Two choices. A. Carry on working long-haul missions on the outer reaches of space. Or two. Come up with a profitable business sellout to Altera. Live happily ever after. I choose two. Ideas. A robot that builds other robots. A water filtration system that has infinite power. Solar power? Body heat? Do suns last forever? Check this. Phase gate that can be built by self-repairing robots instead of poor lonely humans on an 18-month mission. What happens when something goes wrong? A VR program that precisely simulates real life down to the finest detail. How do I know I didn't already invent it and I'm inside it right now? That's steep. A gun that shoots other smaller guns. Can't see any real objections to this one. That's nice. Alright, that's all the life pods. And then... Operations logs. Okay, we'll do like the public document operations logs here. Average long range transmission delay. Eight hours. Opening last recorded transmissions. This is an emergency distress call. Aurora is on collision course with planet 4546B. Sending all available environmental data. Please respond with rescue solution out. This is Altera HQ. Attached to this message, you should find the blueprints for an escape ship that we calculate will be capable of breaking orbit and getting you back to the nearest phase gate. Now, it's designed to use materials you can find and sit you, but it's going to need one hell of a power source. Now, we'll be sure to... Long range well, they'll be sure to do something. Alright, the black box data. Initiate slingshot maneuver around planet 4546b. So that's basically where you, like, kind of use the orbital power of the planet to kind of go around it. Uh, high velocity energy pulse detected on the planet's surface. Emergency distress signal sent to Altera, listening by you via long range comm relay. Impact detected, life pod bays on starboard side. Compromised, outgoing communications com or compromised. Emergency evacuation initiated. Annual piloting transferred to Captain Hollister. Life pods 1 through 25 launched successfully. Only some of those were found by us. Manual piloting transferred to Captain Hollister. Wait, whoops, I just read that. Uh, entering planetary atmosphere, massive impact registered. Drive core shield compromised. Emergency bounce packs received from 8 life pods on planet surface. Okay, so those are, I guess that one's just exploded or something in the atmosphere. Human life signs detected over long range at T plus 8 hours. Uh, one personnel accounted for. Non-essential systems. Maintenance, Chief Riley Robinson. Anywho. Uh, high priority terminal and captain's quarters. Monitoring equipment failed at T 
Lost 13 hours. Drive core shielding breach. The Aurora's drive core is shielded by a thick metal shell, uh, which breached in multiple locations shortly after the crash. Once breached, it will continue to leak radiation into the surrounding environment until the breaches are sealed. After that point, the radiation in the environment will dissipate over time. This procedure should only be attempted with appropriate radiation protection and a fully charged repair tool. VR suite log. Or suit log, I don't know. Uh, loading program, desert island, drama, dot VRAT. Oh, the price stands for like virtual reality, I'm guessing. Size three players, resources normal, spawning players on beach. Player one has been washed away by an unusually high tide. Player two, uh, player two has traded coconut with player three for 10 credits. Player three has planted a coconut. Players are getting hungry. Player three has grown a coconut tree. Player three has eaten a coconut. Player three is no longer hungry. Player three has traded a coconut with player two for 30 credits. Player two has eaten a coconut, but is still hungry. Player three has traded a coconut with player two in exchange for building a tent. Player three is sleeping inside their tent. Player two is cold. Night falls. Passenger ship is offering trading. Player two is offered or has traded 30 credits for a musket. Player three has been shot twice in the head while sleeping. Player two wins. Player two has died from cold and starvation. Wonderful. Lovely. Uh, okay, public documents. Altera Alms Pamphlet. Charity is an archaic concept with uh, which the realism of today's Alterans has rendered obsolete. We understand that we are each responsible for ourselves, but the best way to get the most for ourselves is to work together with Altera. The implication for, of this reasoning is unclear, or is clear. Sorry. Those are two, uh, two different words. If someone is in need, they must find a way to be needed. Altera Alms is a training academy for those that need to be needed. We're not a charity because we don't ask for handouts. We prefer to think of ourselves as a philanthrop uh, philanthropic uh, benef beneficence facilitation service. Yeah, just throw all the complicated words in there, why don't you? Promoting synergy between employer and workforce. Altera Alms operates on a lottery system. By investing any number of credits, you will be entered into our prize draw. Larger investments yield higher chances of winning. Your credits will go towards uh, training unskilled colonists in vital tasks, such as maintenance and interpersonal skills. The colonists receive this training voluntarily and free of charge, on condition of a minimum contract with one of our investors on completion of their training. Altera launches the Aurora. Phase gate announced for the... area... Ariadna Arm. Ariadna Arm? Altera launches the Aurora. The furthest reaches of inhabited space are due to, ex uh, due to expand, as Altera Core launches a newly constructed capital ship carrying a phase gate bound for the area. I, I hate that. I hate that word so much. What? Well, how do you pronounce that? Ariad Ariadna? Ariadna? Ariadne? Ariadne Arm? I the A-Arm. The Aurora will travel from a space dock on the edge of Altera space, making hundreds of consecutive phase gate jumps through nine different Transgov authorities and arrive on the far side of the A-Arm in three months' time. From there, the command crew will pilot the ship beyond the final phase gate, arriving in the next solar system approximately 18 months later. There, the elite team of engineers will begin a six-month construction project on the new phase gate, a multi-trillion credit investment. In the absence of existing infrastructure in the region, the vessel is equipped with advanced thermal and nuclear power facilities. Altera Core currently operates 9% of all phase gates in the galaxy. If the Aurora's mission is successful, Altera will have outmaneuvered a cable of Mongolian corporations operating a range of outposts and mines in the region. Join Altera's board of directors. It's not about the money. That's what every director on, Altera, uh, on Altera's board has told me, and I believe them. Profitability is just an interim measure of success. Power and status are the real goals. Make enough profit for Altera Corporation and you'll be recognized by the most powerful business people in the universe. Establish a company that obliterates the competition and, after compulsory buyout, you can be promoted to the board of directors. Perks include travel, free use of company phase gates, entourage, personal assistance for every facet of your life, longevity, automatic organ replacement. Altera, get what you deserve. Relationship contract legal recording. 
Listen, I know I don't have the right to make demands of you, but I need you to understand that I want to change our arrangement. I hear what you're saying, and I will try to respect it. How would you like to change it? I would like to reduce our contact hours. How much further can we do that? To zero. You're dumping me. I'm changing the terms of our relationship. How is it still a relationship if we don't see each other? It's a relationship of a kind. You have so many expectations. I feel you just want to spend more time with that dumb guy in his dumb robot suit. That's not a feeling. It's a judgment. And I feel hostility in what you're saying. Perhaps your jealousy is a sign that you need to take another look at your business model. Why can't you just be happy for me? I am happy for you. And I'm happy for all the guys in the prawn bay. I'm just not happy for me. This is why I want to change our arrangement. Great. Uh, responsible Autonomous Relationships. Uh, foreword by Jenny Eckhart, who we just heard from. All the good things in life are commodities. We trade love just as we buy, sell, or buy and sell stock. We engage in human relationships when there is a fair exchange of value. Support, motivation, affection, nothing good is ever free. If every physical good in the Federation came from a single supplier, it would constitute a dangerous monopoly. Personal relationships are the same. It is important for people to get what they need from multiple sources. If a person finds a better source of the goods they require, they are not wronging the original supplier by changing their purchasing arrangements. If one member of a relationship should feel threatened or jealous, they must look at their own business model and ask whether it is performing competitively. There is always room for improvement. Ah, oh, today's menu. Perfect. And just what I was hoping for. Starter, Space Bear Velu. Velut? Space Bear Velut. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm, I'll just go with that. Since their introduction to the interstellar vacuum is the 21st century, microscopic tardigrades, or space bears, have adapted and flourished where there are no other life form, where no other life forms have survived. Condensed into a smooth, nutty, protein-rich soup, they are the freshest local ingredient available to travelers on long-haul space flights. The main dish is a cottage pie or nutrient block. Rehydrated minced beef in its own gravy, served with a topping of mashed Chinese potato, picked fresh this morning from onboard grow beds, and a side of sautéed Chinese potato plant leaves. For the time, a conscious consumer, the usual nutrient block options are available. They may be consumed cold or reconstituted at the on-site fabricator. Dessert, dried fruits and nuts. Unfortunately, a recent accident in Cargo Bay 3 involving the incorrect application of a repulsion cannon in combination with a modified battery charger, resulted in the venting into space of all dehydrated desserts. Or desserts. Uh, fruits and nuts will be the only available dessert for the next 39 weeks. Great. Uh, Transgut Profile, Alteracor. One of the largest suppliers of space training technologies and consumer of electronics in the Federation. The official supplier of the TSF, whatever that is. Something Space Force? Uh, I don't know. Consistently ranked among the galaxy's best employers, began life as a defense manufacturer in the mid-22nd century. National model, get what you deserve. Although most transgovs can trace their roots back to Earth, Altera, literally meaning by Earth, is the only one brazen enough to take its name. During the expansion, Altera supplied arms to all sides, acquiring and housing a vast colonist workforce and making the transition from manufacture to corporate state. Altera's threat to cease trade was one of the turning points in the conflict, bringing about the end of hostilities and the signing of the Charter. Free enterprise within Altera's space is encouraged, but competition is tight, and all goods exported off-world must be Altera branded. Profitable businesses are brought out by the state, owners ascending to the board of directors. Well-known Altera technologies like the Cyclops submersible originated with such private enterprises. Despite superficial similarities to the national governments, the corporation's lawyers have always maintained that it has no legal obligation to its employees. Voluntary, uh, voluntarily elects to take on the roles, usually served by a democratically elected government. This claim has not yet been tested in Federation courts. <laughs> Last one. Oh boy. What can we learn from the hive mind of Stratifier, or Strater 6? How are the individuals which make up a hive mind to be categorized? Are they merely dumb components of a larger intelligent organism, or is the larger mind merely a product of the independent organisms? Can it be both? We divine organisms by their traits, but find invariably that these traits depend on those of their environment. The concept of a tadpole is meaningless without the concept of the frog. 
it will develop into. The idea of a predator is empty without an understanding of its prey. This begs the question, if we define everything by reference to everything else, what have we actually explained? An illustrative experiment was recently performed on the hive mind colony discovered on Strator 6. A device was placed outside the nest which would electrocute individuals approaching it. An ant colony would have lost many individuals before a basic danger signal was successfully communicated between them, resulting in learned avoidance of the device. Successful, but costly. The Strator 6 colony quickly formed into two factions. One attempted to remove the device by brute force, sacrificing individuals as they did so. The second attempted to cover the device in sand. These two goals being mutually exclusive, a fight ensued. The first faction was beaten in virtue of their reduced numbers. The device was safely buried and the survivors called a truce. From the perspective of the individuals, this experience must have been horrific. From the perspective of the high mind, a nagging problem had been overcome with the most effective solution. Which perspective is the correct one? We suggest it was neither. By attempting to fit such entities into our rigid set of concepts, we are painting onto the world a false impression of concreteness and meaning, which is a reflection of our concepts of ourselves. We describe Strader's six individuals as attacking one another, just as we describe microbes in the human body. Yet the Strader colony, like the body, cannot be healthy as a whole without the aggressions of its components. We describe neurons in the brains as being dumb, but brains as a whole are er, brains as a whole as intelligent. But when an idea takes hold in the brain and forces out inferior ones, do we, do we describe this act, or do we describe this as an act of aggression? Do we mourn dead neurons? When a philosophy or a technology takes hold in human society, when wars are fought over them and people die, is that rightly seen as good or evil? This is not to undermine the meaning of our existence from where we stand. Our existence is very serious indeed, but is our civilization and our universe really any different from the colony on Strader 6? Is intelligence something limited to things of flesh and blood? Or is the universe truly one giant intelligence system and we but amoeba blowing self-important potholes in its surface? We would do well as scientists to remember that our goal is not to paint the world as we see it, but to see it as it truly is. All of that just to say that? Okay. Wait, it's like I just read a mini miniature book. Yeah, as I figured, my throat's getting kind of sore. I can't, can't imagine why. Okay, we'll read the Leviathan stuff first, and then we'll go... The Gossi survivors will be the last thing that we read. Okay, we'll start with the friendliest. Reefback Leviathan. This vast leviathan is in excess of 30 meters long and has been de uh, designated Leviathan class. Fortunately, it feeds exclusively on plankton life, uh, plankton like life forms in the water. Uh, Chitinous shell. That's one. So is that like I think that has to do with like the bone. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but. I don't want to mispronounce it either. Uh, most of the life form's top side and some of its underside is protected by a thick, layered exoskeleton. Uh, it suggests an evolutionary path quite different from the other organisms on 4546b, most of which are vertebrae in nature. The reefback species is likely to be able to grow far larger than other herbivores because anything large enough to break through its shell has long since gone extinct. Enzyme pods. Similar in appearance to the algae glands on, of the gaspod, these organs on the reefback's underside serve some unknown purpose in its digestive system and are capable of expelling small quantities of stomach enzymes into the surrounding waters. Local micro, uh, microcosm... Microcosm? Microcosm? Uh, an array of different barnacle and plant species grow on the reefback shell, thrusting their roots into ancient scars in the, in the chitin and taking advantage of their mobility to avoid predation. Nonetheless, reefbacks will often be pursued by the faster hungrier herbivores, and thus this leviathan species is a mobile microcosm worthy of years of study in itself. Life cycle. Reefbacks' lifespan likely extend through many centuries uh, should they survive their initial growth cycle. For the first few decades, their smaller size will make them vulnerable to carniv carnivorous leviathans. Sociable, seen traveling in small pods and communicating by an echoing call, behavior is consistent with low-level sentience. 
Uh, assessment, harpers plants, small fish, and metal rich barnacles. Next up would be the Sea Trader, or not Sea Treader Leviathan. A vast bipedal leviathan which roams the reefs in herds, grazing the seafloor. Antenna. Antenna on the creature's head can detect a range of scents, helping the sea treaders to find fresh grazing pastures, avoiding the path of large predators, and sends chemical signals from others of their kind. Uh, carapace. Thick armor protects the creature from attack by all but the largest of carnivores. Two legs extend from the rear. Elongated snout. Used to siphon up plant material from the seafloor and maintain balance. Behavior. Large herds would decimate the flora of a single area, thus encouraging the sea traders' migratory behavior. Families keep their young towards the center of the herd, and parents will lash out at overcurious interlopers in search of an easy meal. Assessment. Sea trader herds may unearth mineral deposits as they churn up the sand. Next on the list, uh, Reaper Leviathan. I, I, I've already read these, but I'll read them again. Leviathan class species are vast organisms at the top of their respective food chains. This species is a streamlined hunter with highly developed senses. Powerful mandibles. This leviathan is capable of locking prey in place with four ma powerful mandibles and drawing it within reach of its jaws. Simulated pressure exceeds sea moth crush resistance. Even though you could totally escape with a sea moth, I'm pretty sure. Echolocation. The deep roar emitted by the Reaper at regular intervals is effectively sonar. If you can hear it, the Reaper can see you. Profile. Scan specimen measured 55 meters long. Observe circling its prey and attacking from behind. This creature is almost all muscle, very little brain. No sense of morality. Just muscle, synapses, and teeth. Motivational note. Congratulations on getting close enough to scan it and living to see the results. Assessment, extreme threat, avoid in all circumstances. Then, it'd be the Ghost Leviathan Juvenile. And yeah, there's no Sea Emperor data entry in this section. Uh, that was back at the uh, alien, all the alien data that we covered. Uh, yeah, Ghost Leviathan Juvenile. This large predator has adapted to live in deep waters and dark cave systems, attacking anything and everything in its quest to grow larger. Torso. Soft outer membrane and elongated body enable superior navigation of tight cave environments. Display some similarity to other E-like predators in the area. However, the ghost leviathan is covered over the electrical prongs on its inner torso with a taut, transparent membrane, which delivers superior maneuverability. Diet. In its juvenile state, this leviathan feeds on larger herbivores and unfortunate members of its own species. They display a remarkable rate of growth which shows no signs of stopping, suggesting that they must abandon their hatching grounds before they grow too large and make for more open waters, assessment, avoid. Adult Ghost Leviathan. This creature is approaching the size limit for sustainable organic life forms and has been designated Leviathan class. Adults of the species have been encountered exclusively around the edge of the volcanic crater, which supports life on this part of the planet and react with extreme aggression on approach. Hammerhead. Cartilaginous extensions of this creature's skull form a hammerhead which protects the ghost leviathan as it performs devastating ramming attacks. It does. While fully capable of tearing through the flesh of any creature in range, all evidence indicates that mature ghost leviathans feed on microscopic life forms in the waters around the edges of the inhabited zone. Their vicious attacks on interlopers to their domain are not predatory in nature, but territorial. A creature so vast requires a huge expanse of water to satisfy its daily kill caloric requirements. Or calorie requirements too, that too. Torso. Its muscled interior body is surrounded by a translucent outer membrane, suggesting adaptation for deep, low-light environments. When threatened, it contents its entire body before lashing out with incredible speed. And life cycle. Probable migratory behavior. The specimen is likely born far from the area where it was encountered. Assessment. Extreme threat. Avoid the crater edge. See Dragon Leviathan. Oh, there he is. There is Leon, Lance, and Lucas. A colossal leviathan with reptilian features. Seen stalking the very heart of the volcanic crater, which underpins life in this area. The scan specimen measured 112 meters in length. E-proof tissue. Tissue analysis reveals this specimen consists of one-third inanimate materials, focused around the chest area. 
consumption and retention of mineral substances may explain the life form's ability to withstand extremes of temperature. It even appears to be able to consume molten materials and expel them at its adversaries. Mostly me. Forearms. Evolutionary, uh, evolutionarily distinct forearms are used for both propulsion and offensive purposes. Finding, uh, findings right, finding suggests evolutionary divergence from other species on the planet tens of millions of years ago. A sea dragon is likely one of the oldest species on the planet. Behavior. As the largest carnivorous species encountered on 4, 5, or 6b, almost everything is potential prey. With a few substantial targets in the volcanic cave systems, the sea dragon likely ventures out into cooler waters to hunt other smaller leviathans, cornering them and forcing them deeper, where they are ultimately boiled alive. Sea dragon's size and restrictions of the cave systems they inhabit suggest their population numbers are extremely low, perhaps in the single digits. While it is not unusual for the larger predators to sustain the lower populations, it is possible the sea dragon's food source uh, has diminished over time. This species may be near an extinction. Assessment extreme threat avoid in all circumstances. And sea emperor juvenile. Oh, he's so cute. Look at him. A juvenile emperor specimen. It is producing a highly potent form of enzyme 42, which should be capable of fully curing individuals of the alien bacterium. This species hatches relatively fully formed and independent, perhaps reflecting the fact they must fend for themselves when they are first born away from their parents. This specimen is healthy and exhibiting signs of a positive attitude to life. The Gussie Crew Manifest, Bart Torgel. Auxiliary Search and Rescue Mission, Bart Togel. Position Vice President of Torgel Cor uh, Corporation. Status Lost in Space near Planet 4546b. Age at time of disappearance, 19. The only legitimate tile, or child of Paul Torgel. Beneficiary of enhanced learning techniques and cerebral implants. Digit trained in advanced biochemistry and stellar economics. Emissary Kazar reports Bart was accompanying his father to a newly constructed deep space station where he was to serve a five-year term as chief operating officer. Auxiliary Search and Rescue Mission, Margaret Maida. Maida? Maida? Uh, position Freelance Security Personnel, Lost in Space, near Planet 4546b, Age of Time Disappearance, 42. Mercenary, born in the Mongolian states. Experienced in ship-to-ship -ship and close-quarters combat techniques. Tours of duty with the Mongolian Defense Force and the Trans System Federation. Dishonorably discharged from the TSF 15 years ago for going off missions. Details classified. Oh, oh the TSF stands for Trans System Federation. Okay. Uh, Emissary Kazar reports Maida was hired to accompany Paul Torgel on board the Degasi into uncharted space and defend the ship in case of assault by pirates or rival corporations. Uh, environment log. User Paul Torgel requested cross-referencing of local environment scans with ideal habitat construction conditions. Displaying results. Large subterranean cavern with uh, multiple entrances. Conditions support a unique micro, uh, microcosm. Mic micro... Ecosystem, I guess. I don't know. Of uh, predatory life forms. Minor structural instability and cave walls. Extensive resource deposits. Average environment safety rating, C. Optimal habit, habitat site safety rating, B. Site 7 has been selected as the optimal habitat construction site for the following reasons. Close proximity to one of the cave entrances in case of emergency. Medium distance from predatory organisms. Stable foundations on which to build. Ready access to materials. A signal tracking. The site has been created. Alright. I thought it might get claustrophobic living underwater father feels it is. He'd tell me it was childish, but I stare out the window and sometimes I think how lucky I am to see this world up close. Back on the island, I wouldn't have believed the creatures that live down here. The fish, they glow. There's one that's 90% eyeball. Snakes twice the length of a habitat compartment. Certainly, it's not all friendly. Most of the plant life is toxic. I learned that the hard way. But... I've managed to coax some marble melons into growing indoors. And when they don't cover our dietary needs, well, we eat the fish themselves. It's a bit gross, but it's nothing they wouldn't do. I've been attempting to document my findings. Father approves. He says understanding is power. 
that the more we know about this planet, the more we can use it to our advantage. I'm just doing it because it's fun. It's not easy without proper equipment and network access, but the old-fashioned way, observing, taking notes, testing theories, shows me the world in a way a spectroscopic analysis never could. Lately, I've been watching the crab snakes. They ambush their prey as it tries to feed on the mushrooms they hide in. What they don't eat settles on the seabed, which fertilizes the mushrooms, which feeds the herbivores, and so the chain continues. Co-evolution gives me the fuzzies. Something incredible just happened. Since we're down here, I had this plan to build equipment and study the life forms we were encountering, but I didn't have enough enameled glass. So, I started looking for a natural substrate that would strengthen the glass we have, and those stalker teeth we've been finding fit the bill. Only, well, we needed more. That's when Marguerite got interested. She actually listened to me. More than I can say for father. And I worked up the courage to talk about my more tentative theories. When I told her they were attracted to metal deposits, that their teeth get dislodged when they pick them up, her eyes narrowed and she dashed out of the room. Three hours later, she came back, her pack loaded down with stalker teeth. I asked her about it. She shrugged and said my theories were good. <laughs> said she had the meeting out of the palm of her hand. I think she meant it literally. She is incredible. She went out to the kelp forest, armed with just a heat blade, and went fin to fin with a pack of stalkers. On the one hand, that is the coolest thing I have ever heard. On the other, well, I hope the stalkers didn't come off worse than Marguerite did. She had a huge gash on her forearm. I don't think things went as smoothly as she made out. And what's the point in surviving here, if we have to kill everything that makes it so wonderful? I wish I knew more about these animals. But... Father won't let me leave the habitat. Maybe with all this glass, we could build a containment unit and get up close to them. This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. After all that time in the deep, I'd been dreaming of it. Now that I'm back here, I'm finding it hard to enjoy alone. Father was right. We should never have left this place. We shouldn't have gone so deep. They do not want us down there. Despite my best efforts, ill health is taking hold of me. The visions are getting worse. Marguerite and Father are now part of the ecosystem of this incredible planet. It's reassuring to know that when I go, I'll join them. Until then, well, there's always the view. This island is a godsend. Look out of the window. No predators. Fresh food. No building materials, nothing left of the ship. And your kid says we're gonna starve without more grow beds. Speak up, kid. It's true, Father. The natural growth rates are too slow to keep supporting us. All I'm saying is oceans got us surrounded. No use hiding. Sooner or later, we'll get our feet wet. The rest of your life may have been a fight maider, but I've made my decision. You want to forfeit your emergency pay to take a swim? Go ahead. Believe me, I'm thinking on it. Son, I said wait for the storm to pass. Your life's more valuable to me than a plant patch. You stop being in charge when the ship you were captaining sunk. I'll stop being in charge when you take charge of yourself. Say, Chief. Chief! What? You know how to drain those grow beds of 40 tons of storm water? Or how to conjure food from the air? I know how to prioritize. I'm just saying, if that's so, what's your boy's life worth to you today? If tomorrow you're gonna be so hungry you start wondering what he tastes like, let him go deal with the plants. Son, go deal with the plants. Bart, Torgo has disembarked the habitat. Interfere with my family again, and when rescue arrives, I will leave you here. Do you understand me? No rescue coming, Chief. Not in time. And no staying here, neither. This rain keeps falling, sooner or later this place will be buried. The only choice we got is whether to get buried with it. You see, Chief, you brought us to this sodden planet. Told us we'd see a lush payday. 
Now what do we got some six weeks later? A dead crew, a habitat that's half buried, food washed away. I suppose the executive decisions would be better left to someone with your extensive experience of hitting people in the face. I know enough not to take unscheduled detours to uncharted planets. That's something you don't want to learn the hard way. Easy to judge a decision in hindsight. Harder to come up with a plan of your own. Got one already. We take what we can carry and hunker down in a cave somewhere. I scouted a site. A couple hundred meters deep. Lots of metal deposits. How do you imagine we'd live? With ready access to building materials? Like damn queens. A couple of water filters, a bioreactor, fresh fish. But Chief, we'll eat seaweed salad and drink our own urine if that's what it takes. All that matters is, do you got something better? Send the coordinates to my PDA. I'll review your proposal. What is that thing? I don't know. I found it outside in the sand. Uh, part of another ship? None I've ever seen. It's not even scratched. Uh, don't fool around with it. It might be worth something. Stand down, Chief. If it were going to crumble to dust, it would have done so when I picked it up. It's glowing. We're not the first people to come to this planet. People? Maybe. Could be aliens. Could be the damn sea monsters for all we know. One thing for sure, we ain't gonna find out by staying here. Son, there is always a pecking order. And in our world, money makes a hierarchy. I pay Maida a fraction of what I pay you, and you a fraction of what I pay me. If money makes the hierarchy, why is Marguerite making the decisions? We need her. We let her think what she likes, so long as she does what she's told. And what if she doesn't? <laughs> For enough money, she will. People always do. We're already 200 meters below sea level. You want to go deeper? Look around us, Chief. Water leaking through the hull, water outside the hatch. We're drowning real slow. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down, it's going to do it again and again until it's shut off. You see an off switch around here, Chief? Why would it any more likely be half a kilometer down? Your kid found something on the scanner. There's something down there. Something that shouldn't be. <laughs> You're mad! I'm going all the same, and I have an idea you two are going to follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. Please, stop fighting and listen. We're sick. What? How? You've been coughing, right? Feeling itchy? Blisters? Yeah. The biometrics would have warned us if we were sick. It's something new. It's not in the database. Come on, then. What's it going to do? Turn us inside out. Dissolve us into jelly. It's an alien bacteria. It's everywhere. Every organism on this planet. It's altering our genetic code. Uh, how are the creatures surviving if they're infected? I don't know yet. Want me to cut some of them open for you? Find out what makes them tick? No. Just tell me what you need, son. Materials. Equipment. Just... Can I have some quiet? I need some time to think. Chief's log, five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart, and Mida, the cut-price mercenary I commissioned for the journey. After days drifting in the life pod, rain hammering on the roof, the weather cleared and we washed up here. I had Mida salvage the Degazi wreck, set Bart to finding us a stable source of food. His education is paying off sooner than I'd anticipated. Our only problem is Maida. She says the weather's going to turn. I say she's finding excuses to risk our lives. I imagine she's not gonna weaken our life without a physical altercation, and she's itching for a fight. In every judgment she makes, things go from bad to worse. If she had my experience, she'd have more faith. Humans have spent millennia specializing in how to shackle nature to our will. This planet won't cause us any new problems. My one task now is to keep us alive, as comfortably as possible, until the insurance company arranges rescue. 
In this part of space, that could be months, or even years. Margaret, Maida has boarded the habitat. What are you so happy about, Maida? Say, kid, I brought you something. Is that a Leviathan outside? Towed it home on the back of the sub. You killed that thing? It's still breathing. I was about to finish the job, but I can stay in chat if you'd like. No? Then make yourself useful and pass me that hardened blade. Are you out of your mind? You brought that thing here? What if it's not as dead as it looks? What if others come? You prefer it got curious and came of its own accord, or got messed up and dragged here? When we get off this planet, I am going to drag you through every court in the damn Federation. I have had it with you, risking our lives. Oh, stow it, Chief. The kid can't kill this disease without fish to study. I'm just bringing him home. But Tell her. Tell her I'm right. You're both wrong. Marguerite, I can't find out how they resist the bacteria if you slaughter them all. It ain't always they oblige in coming in alive. He means you're being reckless. Father, the outcome's no better if we hole up in here and don't go outside. But we have to find a middle way. There is no compromise. Not while she's on my sea base. Your sea base? I'm going outside. Bart, Torgal has disembarked the habitat. Bart, come in. It's dangerous. Damn it, boy. I know you can hear me. Chief. Chief, get off the radio and put on your helmet. What? Brace! Came out of nowhere. An alien kraken, bigger than a cyclops. Tore a hole clear through the reinforced hull. I barely got my breather in time. I told her. I said others would come. The rupture threw me clear of the habitat. And the monster turned and bore down on me. And just as its tentacles came within reach, Maida appeared out of nowhere. She had a sea glide in one hand, a jagged piece of scrap metal in the other. She meant to butcher that beast or die trying. The last I saw her, she had the metal lodged in its neck as the monster did its best to shake her, contorting off into the darkness. I'm certain she got her wish, one way or another. Then... I thought I saw a light deep below me. I hoped maybe Bart had swum clear. I followed it. Now I wonder whether I saw anything at all. Our oxygen is low. The habitat is gone. I can't see the sky. Something surely has the scent of my blood.
Okay, sorry, um... I completely forgot that I had my mic muted. Uh, so I had it unmuted on my OBS recording software or whatever. But, <laughs> my physical mic itself I had on mute. So you didn't hear any of what I was saying before. Uh, so basically I was just, I was pretty much just yelling at Jeremy with a G. I was saying goodbye to Gary again. And I was saying how I had, like, accidentally starved. I had left my game unpaused. I thought I had left it paused. Uh, I went to go grab dinner, came back. I was back in the Lost River. I had a chance to hatch another cuttlefish. I'm not releasing him until I'm finished, being, finished building this. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, and then I brought my Pronsu back up, obviously. So, on the very last episode, I just had to have my mic... At least I didn't have it, like... I didn't have my mic muted when I was actually taking off in the rocket. Yeah, so you didn't miss much from my commentary. Luckily, I was... so loud. Ah, there it is, the Neptune. Do we get to name it? Maybe. Okay, that's still storm. I, I don't want to mute the master volume either. That's... okay, I'm just gonna have to edit... Edit the volume on that. This is just so loud. Yeah, I think that should be everything. Alright. Oh, rocket. One rocket online. Rocket name, alright. So, we had the SS Snowflake. SS Snowball. The SS Snowman. This is the SS Snow Savior. Because we are being saved from this planet. Okay, base color. Uh, I forget which shade of blue I had. I guess it's kind of like a dark navy-ish blue. Stripe 1. I'll do like a lighter blue kind of to accent it. Not a green. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Stripe number two. Okay, stripe number two could be like a... Do like silverish. What? Okay, I guess we can't do like a white lining. So we'll just do like a black stripe instead. I'll put the name... In... Pink. We'll do a pink name. There we go, the SS Snow Savior. Excellent, okay. Now then. I'm going to release you, Cuttlefish. And you better not swim away. Okay? Got that, buddy? Okay, let me play with you at the very least. Oh, here, I got a chip for you, buddy. You want your chip? Go fetch. But don't, but don't go fetch it, though. Oh, come here. Oh, come here. Yeah, give me Finn, buddy. Oh, it's gone. Oh, there it is. Aw. Alright, let's save her all. What? No, on. No, I don't want to modify. No, come here. Don't you dare run away. I want to save her well. Alright, buddy. Oh. Oh. Alright, buddy. Well, this is it. Let's climb on board. We got our ships to see us off. The SS Snowflake, uh... SS Snowman. Uh, Snowball's all the way down there. He's taking care of the base. Don't worry about him. He has Gary for company, though. So I think he should be fine. And how do we board you? Ah, right. Over here. And call elevator. Well, I don't have the elevator's phone number, so... I... I... Oh, there we go. 
Okay, up we go. There's the Aurora, where we saw our first Reaper Leviathan. Very good. Let's hop on board. Boop. What if, what if I had like a password and I had to guess it before I could get on? Okay, hold. Hydraulics. Activated. Pressurizing hydraulics. Oh, I like your voice. Communications array. Online. Communications systems array active. Auxiliary power unit. Online. Auxiliary power unit. Online. Let's climb on up here. Now where is the... Oh, there's the time capsule. Alright, let's prepare our time capsule. Alright. So, do two Kai Knight. And a uh, Cuddlefish Egg. And an Ion Cube. And two Cave Sulfur. Perfect. Just gonna eat that fish real quick. And great. And then image. Let me actually look for an image. Press F11 to take. Oh. Oh, I don't have any actual in game screenshots, I guess. Okay, well, that's fine. It doesn't need an image. Okay, what message? Alright, let's do. Io Cryo here. I just finished an extraordinary journey in this beautiful world. Do not harm the Leviathans, especially Gary the Ghost Leviathan. He isn't very dangerous, just scary looking. Make sure... <clears throat> oh wait, I should, I should probably tell him where he's found. He's found in the northern Blood Kelp Lost River entrance. Make sure to feed him twice a day. He really likes microorganisms. Remember to stay cool, and I'll see you in the next episode. I hope that saved. Okay, yeah, good, dude. Alright. Oh, do I, do I need an image? Hang on. Okay, we'll take one of, of the Aurora from this window. There we go. Wish I had known that ahead of time. And boink, and... There we go. Excellent. Activate the life support. Life support systems online. Great, excellent. And... Seek fluid intake. Well, I'm leaving the planet anyways. I, I don't need to worry about that. Primary computer systems active. I'll just be showered with water the moment I exit the atmosphere. Or, I mean, the planets. All systems are go for lift off. Ooh. Alright, this has been quite the journey. Uh, I hope Gary's alright down there in the Lost River. But uh, yeah, we will uh, continue our adventure in Subnautica Below Zero once it releases in... Well, I mean, it, I know the Early Access is released. I have it installed. But I'm going to start playing the game once it's 1.0 launches, uh, full game release. Supposedly early... Jan er, early 2021, 
which is either January, February, March, or April. So at the very latest, it will be in April of this year. But I have a uh, Terraria and my Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke to bide my time while I wait for that to happen. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy launched. Ready to launch on your command, Captain. All right. Launch in ten, nine, eight. Oh, dude, get out of the way, seven, dude! Get out of here. Five, it's not safe. Four, three, Shoot. Two, one. Oh, here we go. Oh, there. Time capsule okay, there it goes. Jettisoned. Goodbye, time capsule. We're going. Going into space. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, those look like uh. Caution! Yeah. Approaching orbital debris. Field. Oh no! No, it's just like the beginning of the game. No, no. Oh. Oh, we're good. Orbital debris field clear. Performing gravity turn maneuver. Alright, let's take a look down there. Look at the planet's surface. And you may see a bit of an arctic region, perhaps. Confirm destination coordinates. Nearest interstellar phase gate. Engaging yeah, I'm just looking at the surface. Did three, I miss it? Two. One. Whoa. Yeah, it's a bit of a sneak peek at the second game, which is pretty pretty, pretty cool on their part, to have that hindsight to do that. Whoa! So bright. What is a what wave is without the ocean? Oh, Mama. A beginning Mama's back. without an end. They are different, but they go together. Now you go among the stars, and I fall among the sand. We are different. But we go together. There it is. What a journey it has been. I've done things that I hadn't done in my other playthroughs, and it was an excellent time. Uh, thank you guys for sticking through the series and seeing me blunder, seeing me mess around with some Leviathans. Um, yeah, I realized, like, after I finished recording all of the data entries that I had, like, a little floof of hair over my headphones. Uh, I'll probably be, like, zoomed in on the text anyways during that. So you guys probably won't even notice that. Yeah, look at look at this entire team that went into making this game. Philip Johnson, Sean Abigail, Seth Osman, Tom Sportman, Andre Mockney, Steve Gibson, Matt Charles, Elliot Hamilton, Jackson, Lardesy, Michael Morales, Michael Carlson, Eric Cos, Patrick Garvel, Brad Schleiser, Jeff Scal, Cass, Sider. Okay, I can't do this for all the names. I'm sorry, other names. Well, it's a good thing I stopped, because I, I couldn't even begin to tell you how to pronounce those names. But it was a wild time. I had a blast doing it. Can't wait to do it again in Sub-Zero. And I'm going, like, I don't know, let's just say like 95% blind into Sub-Zero. Um, so all my reactions are going to be genuine. I'm going to have no idea where any of the locations are. I'm going to try not to look them up. Unless I have been wandering around for like hours on den without being able to find anything. And oh, this is like a list of all the... I'm guessing like the beta testers. I, I didn't see that. Uh, what, or what the heading was for that section. Uh, production babies, yes. The babies that were born during production. Uh, special thanks to all of the YouTubers. Yeah, except for me, because I I was late on the Subnautica train. 
Also, my channel wasn't even around back when the game was released. But maybe one day, my name will be under that special thanks. Pro probably not. Permission to land will be granted once you have settled your outstanding balance of one trillion credits. Oh yeah. Yeah, we picked up a lot of diamonds. I forgot Altera kind of owns all <laughs> all the stuff, and now we owe them because of all those diamonds we picked up. But yeah, thank you so much. Uh, for joining me on my Subnautica journey. I hope to see you again once Subnautica Below Zero is fully released. But, until then, remember to stay cool, and I will see you guys in the next series.